Hello everyone. When I first started learning Rust a couple of years ago, the first thing that really got me thinking was strings. You see, in Rust there are two types of strings. There's the string type and there's the str type. As you go on seeing examples and tutorials, you see that both of them are throughoutly used. So the natural question is when should I use one over the other? So in this video we're going to explore the differences between the two, but first we'll need to discuss how strings are actually kept in memory. So let's start with the first example. Don't pay much attention to the language itself because the following considerations can be applied to Python, Go, Java and a whole lot of other languages. We want to create a string surrounded by spaces, such as s equal to space hello space. From a memory standpoint, the situation is characterized by two memory entities. We have a memory region on the heap containing the actual string content, and then we have a string record on the stack containing the memory location of the first element on the heap, and generally its length. Looking at our example, we can say that S does not contain the actual string content, but instead it is simply a reference to the memory region containing the content. And this is in contrast with other basic data types such as integers, for which their value is usually stored on the stack due to them having a fixed size. Let's say that we want to apply the trim operation to the string or strip in Python to obtain its content, but without the surrounding spaces. We could do t equal to s dot trim. In this case, the variable t will hold the value hello without any surrounding space. In most garbage collected languages, that operation causes a separate allocation, so you end up with two memory blocks on the heap. This is where the Rust magic happens. If we assume that neither t nor s will be modified and they are immutable, we can optimize the previous operation by simply creating another string record and having the start index at the second cell of s and having a length of 5 instead of 7. From the user perspective, t will be a string with length 5 and content hello, but no additional allocation will be necessary, greatly improving memory efficiency. In Rust, what we call the string record is referred to as str type and represent a reference to a contiguous char array along with its length. Technically, this is called a reference to a string slice. Of course, this technique cannot be applied to every situation. For example, if we call d to uppercase method, the resulting string will not be a different view of the same string, but instead it will be an entirely different one. So in this case, an additional allocation will be needed. The powerful aspect of string slices is that the location of the string content can vary depending on the situation. Sometimes the content will be located on the heap, sometimes on the stack, and sometimes it will be a static portion within the Rust binary itself. One thing that often confuses beginners are string literals. In particular, when you write the following code, let string1 equals to hello, you're not allocating a string on the heap. Instead, you are creating an immutable string literal whose content is stored on the binary itself, and this is possible because its content is known at compile time. On the other hand, this is not the case if you write the following code. In this case, we take an integer i equals to 10 and then we convert it to a string. In this case, the string content is not known at compile time, so we needed to do an allocation on the heap, creating the string 10. If we now analyze the type of the two previous variables, we notice that string1 is of type string slice and string2 is of type string. This is because the first string does not allocate any memory on the heap, whereas the second one does. As a rule of thumb, anytime you need to allocate new memory, you will need to use the string type. Whereas if you only need a different view of an existing string, the string slice type will be more adequate. Technically, the string type is a known type, whereas the string slice is not. And to really understand the difference between the two, you really have to grasp the concepts of ownership and borrowing, which, by the way, if you need some help on those, I made a video a few months ago on the channel and the link should be up here. In a nutshell, when you allocate some memory on the heap, 
there must be a way to free it when it's not used anymore, otherwise you'll produce a memory leak. In Java or Go that's the responsibility of the garbage collector, but in Rust it's the ownership system that frees that memory region once the variable, the owner variable, goes out of scope. Now that you know the basics, let me give you a couple of tips. You can easily convert between the two using the toString and the borrow operation, such as in this case we have a string literal, foo, we convert it to a known string, so in this case we are allocating some memory on the heap, and then we get back a string slice by using the borrow operator, the end symbol. Another important use case is the use of strings in function signatures. When you are designing function signatures, keep in mind that generally strings are passed as string slices and are returned as owned strings, such as the following. This prevents unnecessary copies when passing the parameters, but also guarantees that the output string will live long enough to be received by the calling code. Moreover, it allows the function to accept both string slices and owned strings. Of course, there are many exceptions to this rule, but for most cases, and most importantly, until you really understand ownership and borrowing, this approach will serve you well. Alright, so this was just a quick introduction to Rust strings. I really hope you liked it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video because it really helps, and I hope to see you in the next one.